So, what is the... <laughs> So, how does one get into the furry fandom? There are several theories on the subject. <laughs> I think that's what happened to me, man. So, uh, we asked furries so what got them into furry, and a lot of people said some kind of popular media. Some movie that I watched, or some, some sort of a favorite movie, a favorite. No! <laughs> Some kind of artwork they're exposed to, having a pet that they got along really well with, or they felt like, hey, I, I understand my cat, so I'm sort of like a cat or something. Uh, a trip to the zoo, so they saw, you know, they... When you were young... <laughs> So like being five or six years old and seeing a lion and having that like really, you know, like that was really cool and just kind of remembering that experience, that might make me like... What's the lion doing? <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. Birds ruin everything. So some furries said it was something outside of them, others said it was something inside of them. Some kind of epiphany they had, some sort of form of self-discovery. <laughs> some kind of spiritual experience or just something that they just always kind of felt this way. That, you know, I always had this, this sort of animal spirit within me. It wasn't something that, that had to be inspired. I'm a monkey. <laughs> In terms of the, the, the most popular influences, things that got you into the furry fandom, the internet is for porn. Oh my god. For porn. For porn. So we find that about 25% of furries have something inside of them, but 30 to 35% furries have something outside of them, and the rest of furries have some combination of both of them that led them to the fandom. In terms of what keeps furries yeah. coming back Anything to the fandom, or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we asked them, you know, is it a sense of belongingness? And a lot of furries said that, yeah, I stay in the fandom because I feel this sort of sense of belonging to a community. I just say my life sucks and it's just kind of fun to be in a different place. It's fun and painting. Uh, they're kind of mixed on whether or not it's for attention. <laughs> so, some, of, some of our characters stick out like a sore thumb, you know I mean? No, I don't move! Circle! Uh, sexual attraction. We're kind of split on this one. We're getting there. So, in general, it seems to be porn. <laughs> We're getting to the porn section. <laughs> Make it sooner. The cake is a lie. No, in general, no, I just the ate thing, it. Things that keep furries coming back to the furry fandom are actually a lot of the same things that keep other people going to similar groups or fandoms as well. I said to belongingness. Rainbow. Shut up. Yeesh, heckler. There are some things that are idiosyncratic among furries, though, namely sort of appreciation for artwork and attraction. That seems to be kind of unique to furries, at, le at least compared to other groups like, you know, belonging to a sports fandom or something. Uh, and also sort of this feeling of inclusiveness or acceptance, the feeling that we are like a big family in this group. Why do furries leave the fandom? Got no it's sort of a work in process, or progress. We have a lot of sort of hypotheses on the subjects. Uh, maybe it's the fact that life happens, you know, you get older, you life have happens. kids, or you get a job, you don't have time. I just say the Phantom just ain't what it used to be, you know, we used to have different memes, different sort of things, it used to be about writing, not about artwork, for whatever the case, some people feel that it's just not what it used to be. Um, we had this other hypothesis, the sort of scaffold or function hypothesis, which says that the furry Phantom fills a lot of needs for us, and over time we just kind of, you know, if, if I'm a very introverted person and I'm using the Phantom as a way to become more outgoing, over time, if I keep doing that, over time I become a more outgoing person. I Another don't really one is the that fandom. they claim they grew out of it. 
Pardon? Another one is they claim they grew out of you it. You can't grow yeah, out of this. That a lot. Yeah. Disney's with you forever. And you're like, I learned the claws into you. Okay, so uh, we've, we've got a longitudinal study up and running. Um, I hope all of you have signed up for it. But in this, if you are one of these people who eventually stops going to the fandom and being part of the furry fandom, could you please keep filling out the surveys? Or just let us know. Send us off an email or something. Let us know why you're leaving because yeah. we're really interested in knowing. Yeah, we really want to know. So, Thanks. Uh, so all this is sort of what gets people into the fandom, what keeps them in the fandom, but what is it? What makes the furry fandom, you know, all of these sorts of things? Hey, Dark Natasha. <laughs> what makes these different <laughs> these sorts of things? <laughs> One word or The fact that the fandom is a participatory fan culture. Unlike, say, other fandoms, we make our own stuff. <laughs> so, no one person gets to decide what counts as authentic furry or not. Unlike, say, J.K. Rowling in deciding what counts as legitimate, you know, Harry Potter Harry canon or Potter. not, no one gets to decide what counts as furry or not for the rest of us. That's kind of unique. And we find that a lot of furries create content. A lot of furries consider themselves to be artists and writers. We find about 30% of furries consider themselves to be writers, and about 40% of furries strongly consider themselves to be artists. So we have a lot of very creative people within this fandom. <laughs> uh, magical thing. All right, yeah, so we do find that the more you identify with the furry, oh yeah, right, furries are, are creative and, and you know fantastic. They, furries are much more. The more furry you are, the more likely you are to believe in magical thinking. Uh, the more likely you, you are to have in childhood engage, had a very active, vivid imagination and fantasy life. Uh, and the more you engage in uh, sort of furry-related fantasy activities, uh, and we find that. Um, the kinds of fantasy that you engage in tend to be furry themed, so the more you're into the furry fandom, the more you kind of, oh, it spills over into other fantasy activities, so you play furry video games, you do furry role playing, you... Pet dragon! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, th this is a fun new one, this is a new one that, I, that, that we started asking. Uh, we wanted to know whether it was the case that furries just anthropomorphize animals, or do they anthropomorphize other stuff as well? They do! <laughs> <laughs> furries are much more likely to anthropomorphize animals, but they also kind of anthropomorphize robots and stuffies. It also has the hot stuffies. Stuffies. <laughs> you need to replace that with plushies. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's a critic. <laughs> I'm Canadian. Eh? Yeah, I'm white. What you so, uh, we asked furries what sort of stuff counted as, you know, what kind of stuff do you do in the fandom? These are some of the various things. What so so what 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 things are definitive for furries? I like the last one. Community. It tends to be a furry that's all about community, all about you know art. These are things that are really really prominent in the fandom. And a lot of people said things like drama and sex. Furry things drama. That are, things like drama and sex tend to be things that while they're in the fandom, that's not necessarily what it's all about. Thing, I love this slide. <laughs> <laughs> the things furries really like. These are things that furries said they most furries say they like. These are some things that you know a lot of furries generally type to like. And there's only one thing that furries kind of very nearly unanimously said they dislike. <laughs> Which is, which is why they make the best control group for our study. Uh, we asked furries about other role-playing activities. So, you know, if you want to consider having a persona a role-playing activity, we find that furries, in general, they're kind of split. There's a, a few activities, it's on a seven-point scale. Um, there's some interest in things like tabletop gaming, online role-playing games. Uh, mugs, sort of chat rooms, but nothing really stood out as being like you know another really really prominent thing that almost all furries do. There's a role playing. There. Uh, <laughs> 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 Bad dragon. <laughs> I gave furries a creativity test, an actual standardized creativity test. One of the questions asked furries 
uh, all the different brick. things you could do with a brick. <laughs> 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 Another one asked for it. What are all the things like that, that a chair and a desk have in common? <laughs> <laughs> These are joke. some of the best answers. <laughs> 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 Some of your favorite artists. What are the top most popular websites in the furry fandom? Furfinity! E621! E621! Shut up, Corsini! Oh, God, you're a dragon! FJ! Bad dragon! You may notice that some of these may be a little bit pornographic. Popular artists in the fandom. Red Rooster. 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 Red this is a section that I call it, if you ever wonder why your artist is pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> artist, this one's for you. So we asked furries a bunch of questions about how they feel towards artists. And this is what the response was. I think that artists are obligated to go above and beyond expectations to fulfill their fans' requests. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 Really? Yeah. It's that over there. <laughs> if I email an artist, I expect them to email me back. <laughs> yeah! Wow. <laughs> the artists that I am a fan of should make special accommodations for me or other fans because we are devoted. Artists should listen to their fans and take our suggestions. I would let an artist know if I thought their work was subpar. For shame. <laughs> so that, that's my little, you know, why your artist is pissed off. So to end this little section, what is the furry fandom? It's an art-centered participatory fandom that includes, but is not limited to, traditional science fiction and fantasy themes with anthropomorphic focus. Cool. And it contains many subcultures. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. These are furries' ratings. <laughs> <laughs> I will ask there may there may be baby first or Nazi first in the crowd. Please don't you know kill you. Keep, keep in mind that if you're if you're like one baby for a oh. moment. But the vampire's gotta go. Your, right? Yeah, they're they're not not gonna gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> Cares about anyway, this is the way the fan feels towards various subcultures within our fandom. I know, baby. Okay, quick question. Yep. Yes. Why are those numbers negative? Why doesn't it just like... Because they really hate it. It went from negative three to positive three. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hey, where's the information about... Uh, 
Where's the information on baked goods? Because I don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> That would be a good thing. Help me fish. Mom, you just missed it. Where's the information on board? Somebody.